Hi everyone! So I tried to create some festive atmosphere today on my desk and I'm going to teach you how to draw a more kind of like a whimsical owl and we're going to turn it into a character and give it some nice floral embellishment on the head. So it's really easy and simple so let's just start so basically uh, to begin with now you can turn these into Christmas cards and that's uh, that would be lovely to to give away so let's start by drawing out an egg shape so we're going to do an upside down egg so the the narrow bit is going to go at the bottom and the wider bit at the top. It doesn't have to be perfect, remember it's going to be whimsical. So roughly this is our egg shape. And the next thing I'm going to do is create some feet. So the feet are going to be like as if you are drawing leaves. Just do three of those like that and like so. It kind of looks a little bit like uh, claws and we are going to settle this owl on some sort of a kind of like a delicate branch of leaves so I'm just going to draw these out like so and leave it at that so it's nice and simple now let's concentrate on the face so to begin with I will put a triangle like so an elongated triangle roughly in the middle of the face but so that it finishes let me just zoom in a little bit for you so you can see better so that it finishes on the lower half uh, but the the line the beginning of it is sort of in the middle of of the owl body now from here we're going to create um, a U shape and I will show you what it's supposed to look so we're going to finish it around about halfway so do again this and then like that then we're going to uh, create some eyes now the eyes could be different shapes depending what you like I am going to create this kind of shape so first starting with a, um, an oval almost and then adding these triangles and make it look Uh, a little bit more feline kind of thing but basically that's what we're looking for okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some kind of uh, festive embellishments on our owl so I'm going to start drawing out this simple kind of elongated eye shape and then I'm going to a couple of this the same shapes around the nose area like so and then I'm going to fill in with the same shape but slightly smaller in between and then we're also going to create ones that go this way and then we're going to put one in the middle also a bigger one and then each side 
a smaller one. So it kind of looks like some sort of diamond pattern or feathers. You know, you can just um, let your imagination take take control here. And for now, this is it. But we're also going to add some flowers. And the flowers, I want to be quite kooky. So I'm going to create these kind of wispy um, petals. And then in the middle, we're going to draw a couple of lines with these bits at the base and then we're also going to add a couple more of the um, petals like so a couple of them going in and out kind of twisting and then at the minute the uh, owl looks a little bit scary <laughs> I have to say it looks like a devil but uh, hang on there, we're going to add some watercolors and make it all look pretty. And so that's that. It's also quite conceptual, so it's one of those things where you let your imagination a little bit free. So then I'm going to add Actually, I quite like it like that. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to add a small flower around this area here. And the petals are going to go hide behind one another. Okay, I think that should probably be enough okay yes I'll leave it at that it's some sort of uh, Frida owl concoction here but the next thing we're going to do is grab some watercolors and create quite a bright color palette now you can do as bright as you want or go a little bit more muted I want orange and I want turquoise and I want the whole load. So to begin with, I'm going to leave the flowers uh, kind of as they are and I'm just going to concentrate on the beak. So I've got a little bit of this super bright orange. If you're interested, there are links to all of these colors. So I'm going to put this very bright beak like so and I'm going to try and control the water as much as I can. Now the eyes, um, let's see, the eyes I'm going to do in Payne's Grey because I want nice dark eyes. And I'm going to leave a highlight in the middle. And I'm going to try repeat the same highlight on the other side. Or thereabouts. Now the turquoise I want to go into this here, into these um, areas that we created like that I haven't done any conceptual drawings in a while and this feels quite fun so I'm just going to do it in one color All the way around and then if I want to add a little bit of a different kind of shade, uh, shade or hue 
I can do that by just dubbing on the watercolor so that way I don't need to mix anything. Okay, so now I'm going to go into this lovely turquoise, ultramarine turquoise, and just in several places, not everywhere, I'm just going to blend them. They work really well together because they're kind of on a similar um, similar shade. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, look at this kind of green. I want like a brownie green, but anyhow, I'm just going to Go into my Green Appetite Genuine and just first of all, actually, I'm going to do the the branch itself. Kind of try to go in between the claws so that it looks like the owl is holding on to it. And then just do the same, just one color. And then if you do want to make it a little bit more interesting, what you can do is then go, for example, into sub green and just dab it on in, a, in several places. And that kind of will break it down a little bit, make it more interesting. So that's that. Next thing we're going to do is look at the flowers. Now the the flowers is kind of you know if I start adding any other colors it will be a little bit too much so I have to make sure that either I go with the same orange or a similar color. Now I quite like this Quinacridon Deep Gold which is also an orange but just uh, not not a like a red or a bright one so I'm just going to try and do the petals like so leaving some highlights and some untouched area as well there we go And a little bit more over here. And I'm going to mix up a similar shade of this one, but it's going to be with a little bit of that orange in there so that we don't have the exact same color throughout. And then what we can do is again, we can dab in some colors. So for example, the petals that are interlinked, we are going to separate the color slightly. This was supposed to be a super easy uh, tutorial I just can't do super easy, it looks like. And it's also a bit later in the day where I seem to be getting a little bit more tired to film. Okay, so with the remaining colour on the brush, I'm just going to haphazardly kind of just do a bit of this. And I might as well add some of that Nickel Aza yellow just because it's a lovely color and I want some kind of gold speckles and flowers. And at this point I'm going to go ahead and dry it and then we're going to um, add some watercolor to the actual owl. Okay, so now as you can see, there is a little bit of space here, so you can use that to write um, or to stamp Merry Christmas. 
or whatever you fancy to to write and now I'm going to get a nice kind of mix of let me see the Mayan blue genuine and I'm going to kind of sort of mix it into this gray kind of color I like to say kind of a lot I notice when I edit my videos so I'm just going to fill in in between these patterns and I'm not doing a solid fill in I'm leaving some areas untouched and I'm going to while it's still wet going to intensify or darken the color just on this side like that and then I'm going to pull it through with whatever I have left in between these patterns again connecting this bit before it dries so we don't have a hard edge and then same thing here before it all dries you can wet your brush and then sort of wiggle it in between that helps to get rid of the hard edge if you need to so that is our kind of base color done now what I would like to do is just take some of the Payne's gray and highlight where the nose is just here and then if the watercolor is still wet that's fine I actually want it to be quite soft so I'm going to go ahead and soften the edges before they dry so what I'm going to do now is with a wet clean brush I'm just going to touch it underneath and that way soften the edges like so And wherever I need to darken it up again, I'm just going to do that by dabbing in the color like so. Again, you should do this while it's still wet. And I also want this dark color on the claws. I want them to be quite... Um, So if you need to elongate the claws, then you can do that. Or you can also correct if you need to correct anything. And that is our claws done. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create a little bit of... Um, definition just underneath and I'll do two eyes at the same time so I'm going to define them by adding a little bit of darkness underneath like so and also around here so this is probably now better done on a dry uh, paper so that you can start layering the color a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and dry it okay so at this point it kind of looks like we're getting there so it starts to look a little bit more interesting but to kind of bring it to the next level I have got the uh, polychromos pencil sitting next to me separated in two color schemes and what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to grab just random colors. I also got my um, Heidi Swap color shines ready in color mint and mustard. So these two colors would work really beautifully with the owl, I believe. And to begin with, I'm just going to uh, actually, before I do anything... 
I'm going to grab a detail pan, which is this Muji one. And I'm going to, so this is not waterproof, so that you know. Don't use it if you're planning to add water, because it will move. So I'm just going to doodle uh, a few bits and pieces. And then I'm going to go in with the um, pencils because the pencils are wax based and they will kind of burnish the paper a little bit to the point where you won't be able to add your um, pens to it basically. So that's why I'm doing the pan first. So at this point, just do some doodling. Just kind of, you know, let it go and enjoy the process. I'd say if you see something needs to be added, add it. And that is it. Without much thought in, in there. And now I'm just going to add this yellow pencil in some areas here and there. It lifts things ever so slightly. So when you look at it, it almost, you can't notice it. But if you take a picture of before and after, you can see a big difference there. So now I'm going to go into like a darker, um, what's this, middle cadmium red. I need like a darker orange. And I think, or like a brownish. There we go. Let's put on this side. So I've got one in... Sanguine and terracotta. I think terracotta is what I'm after. And I'm going to, yeah, just here you can see there isn't much depth. So I'm just going to uh, deepen up a, a few petals just to separate them from one another and create a little bit more depth, really. So we'll do that throughout all of them. And I'll try not to go over the black pan because that sometimes can be covered up. So the other pencil is this one here. So this is a bit more kind of like a reddish tone. It's beautiful. I love this pencil. So I'm trying to leave the yellows still quite uh, pronounced, but at the same time, I'm also deepening some of the other parts of the um, petals, like so. Ever since I got Polychromos pencils, I just have been really enjoying um, playing with them and adding them to watercolors. So the next color I would do here is this one, just to blend it out ever so slightly. And just add it in some areas here. Okay, so I'll leave it at that actually before I finish with it. I'm going to go into the beak and just create a little bit more dimension with two or three, in fact, colors. So that makes it kind of glow a little bit or come up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and doodle a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of... Um, doodle in such a way that you can see the line almost exaggerating certain points and making them really pointy and bringing them out as well but like I said I'm not shying away from overdrawing something where you can see the watercolors inside rather So 
So here in a way this is the time to correct anything if you want to change shape ever so slightly you can do that and then I'm going to pull through the line like so and that is coming out now a lot more so I'm going to go ahead and continue doodling around and I'll probably speed it up for you so you can watch it with some nice music to it and then we'll catch up at the end where I'm going to just add some splashes to to the owl Okay, so here is my owl and I think having done the outline makes certain elements um, and details come out a little bit more. So also adding the lashes kind of made it look a little bit less scary, I think. And at this point I'm going to do some splatters and if you are a little bit afraid of ruining your work then you might stay away or you might just cut out um, like a shape for the area that you want to hide or do something like this and then do around it but I don't mind getting splatters over the whole area the only uh, place I mind getting splatters over is my desk so I'm just going to get my ranger mat and craft sheet and we're going to do the splatters okay so I'm going to start with this mint color which is quite pretty it's very Christmassy. It's got that um, like um, evergreen Christmas tree kind of color to it. Give it a good shake before you start and then kind of think about where you want big splatters and small splatters and just go about it because you can't predict this it um, is very unpredictable and now we're going to do these lovely uh, depths of color like so and I think I will leave it maybe actually just a little bit here as well and that looks quite nice to me it sort of adds and finishes things beautifully and then you can see in a few areas where it creates a different green when you mix the two together so I am going to go ahead and do some drying all right so we're almost there and I think having splatters just makes everything look a lot more interesting and just so much more fun as well so it's kind of really original and very cookie and I think it would make a great illustration for Christmas cards because um, it's pretty original and it has that sort of um, interesting look to it you know when you would look at it it kind of reminds you of a face at the same time there are elements of a creature like a you know owl a bird um but if you look at it like that it's almost you know some sort of kind of yeah like a human creature i don't know but then this bit reveals the owl and i think it's uh pretty interesting so i'm going to go ahead and just do one little thing which is just um, using the black gel pen just adding the black 
into here because you can see if I'm going to zoom in now you'll see that it makes a big difference there is something that needs to be a little bit more deepened and darkened to reveal the detail because otherwise uh, there isn't enough darkness here and we do want the darker elements of the rest of the illustration to kind of go through and follow through I'm sorry if, if it was out of focus so I'm going to do the last one which is this one and I hope it will be in focus this time so that's it and now our owl creature is finished so I hope you enjoyed it and if you give it a go then have loads of fun because I know you will and look at those lovely shimmery effects over here from the color shine if you wanted to you could also add some gold but I prefer to kind of mimic it depends what I'm in mood for um, if I'm having two colors here then that's kind of plenty for me I like to mimic the stronger colors of the illustration uh, in the splatter so that would be the turquoise and the orange and although this isn't quite turquoise it's more of a um, green but I do like the look of it so yes thanks for watching and see you soon